Hello again, and welcome to work at a pizza place, which is the only workplace where you can get away with baking your girlfriend alive, blatantly breaking 17 health code regulations at once, recklessly driving on neighborhood roads, wasting the entire world's supply of Sprite, and being the biggest asshat in all of Roblox. Despite how old and seemingly simple this game is, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. I'm going to unveil the secrets that the Builder Brothers have been hiding from us for all these years. Due to work at a pizza place's collaborative nature, a lot of values are shared server-wide. These include how much of each supply there is, which includes dough, tomato sauce, cheese, pepperoni, sausage, pizza boxes, and knockoff Mountain Dew? These values are kept in a folder in what's called the server storage. What you'll also find in the server storage are all the objects in the game that are cloned. These are in a different folder than the supply values, but these objects include supply boxes, vehicles, the ingredients themselves, and of course, knockoff Mountain Dew. In case you don't know, objects that just seem to appear out of thin air are cloned from the server storage and place what is called the workspace. The workspace is where every object that can be seen is, and I mean everything. The map, the vehicles, the 7,000 coins worth of toilets in your living room, everything. Speaking of coins, how are those tracked? Each player has an object called a player that is kept in a special folder called players. In that player object, you can store certain values that are different for each player, such as how much money a player has, and then use what is called a data store to save it to the Roblox cloud so that you don't lose all of your money when you leave the game. Another thing that's kept in the player value is what's called an array of all the furniture in your house. How the game keeps track of your furniture and loads it back in the right place when you log on is it makes an array which you can imagine as a grocery list of different values and in this case it's taking every furniture item in your house along with its position and rotation and putting it on that grocery list. When you join it goes through the grocery list and places all the furniture back into your house. Now I know what you came here to see. No it's not the toilets in my living room I'm talking about money and if you want to have a 0.000001% higher chance of becoming a billionaire you should hit that subscribe button. How does it work? Well, I, I just channel my YouTuber energy to you and it may or may not do something. Anywho, the server earnings value is an integer value in the server storage that's added to every time a delivery is completed. By default, delivering an order adds 10 plus one for every additional order completed within 10 seconds. Double value orders add double the amount to the server earnings value. Combos are also multiplied. For example, delivering two double value orders within 10 seconds of each other will add 42 to the server earnings. 20 for the first delivery and 22 for the second. At the end of every 12 hour period, everyone in the server gets paid the amount of coins in the server earnings value and then the value gets reset to zero. Now that we got the core mechanics explained, let's talk about what's going on behind the scenes with each individual job. The cash registers have four buttons, as you know, that each contain what is called a surface GUI. These can be used to place text and image labels on parts such as the buttons on the register. Then a click detector is used to detect when the buttons are being clicked on. When the cashier interacts with an NPC, the register has a string value, which can store text to store what the NPC wants. If the value isn't blank, the game uses an if statement to check if the button the player pressed matches the order. If it does, the order will be added to the order array, which I'll touch on later. If it doesn't, the NPC will walk off angry and the register string value will be cleared. As I briefly mentioned before that dude wished I had died from the stench that my collection of 47 toilets generate, the server has an array of all pending orders. This is simply an array of string values that correlate to the order. Whenever a pizza is put together, that pizza is renamed to whatever type of pizza it is. When putting a pizza through the chute? What is that thing called? A door? One of those flappy things you have in airports? Anyhow, when a pizza is put through, the game checks the entire array to see if the name of that pizza equals any value on the array. If so, the value is removed from the array and the order board is updated. How the order board works is that it uses a for loop with a function called iPairs. What this function does is it runs a set of code as many times as there are values in, the, in an array, and the value it's on can be pulled and used in the loop. In this for loop, there are a series of if statements that add the appropriate image to the order board depending on what the string value is. But what about double time orders? How do those work? Here, I have a very dangerous weapon. 
if you are a pizza. How these things work is that you click on a pizza, which has a click detector on it that checks to see if the player that clicked on it is holding a pizza cutter. If so, a boo value that indicates if the pizza has been cut will change to true. If you try to close the box when this bool value is false, you can probably guess what will happen. <laughs> but how do you move stuff around at all? Every movable object in the game has a click detector. Using a script, you can use mouse ray casting, which is a function used to translate the 2D movement of the mouse cursor to the 3D space of Roblox, to move the object to wherever the mouse cursor is until the mouse button is released. When two objects that can be combined touch each other, a Roblox script signal called touched, which every part has, is used to move the part, say a pizza, to become welded to the pizza box, or the tomato sauce to become welded to the dough, or the uncooked pizza to the oven, or the knockoff Mountain Dew to my mouth. When a pizza is put through the doohickey, the doohickey uses that same touch signal, except this time, it checks if the object is named Pizza Box. Open pizza boxes won't fit, and other objects wouldn't be called Pizza Box, so this system works quite well, even though it's quite simple. If the object passes the test, then... well, that brings me to... Unless you begged your parents for 200 Robux to get the pizza delivery scooter, or you're enough of a psychopath to walk, you've driven these cars. Work at a Pizza Place is one of the only games that still uses legacy vehicles. How you make one of these is you strap a special part called a vehicle seat to a body, slap on four wheels, and boom, you have a car. Yeah, if only things were still that simple. Why most games these days don't make cars like this is because they're unrealistic. Like, seriously unrealistic. And they also drive like crap. Each house in the neighborhood is given a number with no letters. That's right, your entire life is a lie. <laughs> Houses in row C are numbered 1 through 3, the B row is 4 through 9, and the A row is 10 through 12. A script is used to convert this number to the letter number format you're familiar with. Why the houses would be organized this way in the code is so all the game needs to do when the player picks up a pizza or knock off Mountain Dew is use a random number generator to find the house the order is going to. The pizza in your inventory is renamed to the number of the house you're supposed to deliver it to. When a pizza is delivered, a delivery will only be triggered if the player is holding the pizza. When the player is holding an item, that item is taken out of the player's backpack and made a child of the character, which is the player's physical avatar. When you touch a door, the game checks if the pizza's name, which is literally a part of your avatar when you're holding it, is the same as the house number. If so, the NPC will be happy. If not, they'll be confused and slam the door in your face. But what happens in this scenario? Hello, how are you? I am under the water. Please help me. Despite how ancient the car technology is, almost all games use this system for spawning in cars. In every place a vehicle can spawn, there's an invisible part. When the game wants to spawn in a new car after a car was deleted, it clones that car from the server storage and places that car's primary part exactly where the invisible part is. This is how the trucks spawn in too. Before I run out of time, let's talk about... This job is probably the simplest in terms of programming. The buttons clone boxes from the server storage that have very specific colors. When these blocks are sucked into the chutes, there's an invisible part that uses a chain of if statements to add to the appropriate supply value depending on the color of the box before destroying it. If you did enjoy, I'm not giving you a chance to harm my viewer attention. Bye.